The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, so that everyone who believes in him might not perish, but might have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him will not be condemned, but whoever does not believe has already been condemned, because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the verdict that the light came into the world, but people preferred darkness to light because their works were evil. For everyone who does wicked things hates the light and does not come toward the light so that his works might not be exposed. But whoever lives the truth comes to the light so that his works may be clearly seen is done in God. The Gospel of the Lord. I was thinking this morning how funny the church can be sometimes. We just finished celebrating Easter in all the grandeur, Divine Mercy Sunday, and now we're talking about the apostles being incarcerated, tortured, hunted down. It's not very pretty. But what were you expecting? Because we are the body of Christ. And the church is the sacrament of Christ continuing to live in the world. St. Paul talks about the fact that we live and we die in Christ and his death and resurrection are in our bodies. In other words, we're living out the passion of Jesus as he did in many ways. Because the world continues to need saving and the world must see Christ to be saved and we become his witnesses. And so St. John says, in the world you will have trouble. The battle's not over yet. And yet, and yet, the gospel is not chained either. The gospel is literally unchained. The human effects, or the human efforts to squelch the gospel continue to be sabotaged. It's interesting what happens here in the Acts of the Apostles. Prison doors are mysteriously unlocked by themselves. Guards are baffled by the fact that prisoners are missing and they have no clue. Police and military and religious leaders are frightened by a crowd and all this happens without no stirring of riots, no threats. The apostles go around minding their own business and preaching the gospel, which is what we need to do. We live the Christian life for the world to see. We are the city on the hill, the light that shines brightly, and the salt of the earth. Without lifting a single weapon, the God conquers, especially in the Acts of the Apostles. And then the true mission of him is revealed, especially in this passage 
so beautifully laid out. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That everyone who believes in him will not be condemned. Here is the reality that humanity is failing miserably at taking care of itself. It always has since that faded day in the Garden of Eden where Adam and Eve took the fruit. We are not capable. Divine intervention is necessary. And the best thing we can do is cooperate with the gospel and the divine intervention that is constantly happening to renew the face of the earth. The weapons we wield are charity. The gospel, the sacraments, especially the Holy Eucharist, the rosary, which a dear friend would of mine would call the weapon of mass salvation because to be bound with the Blessed Mother for the sake of the children of her beloved Son is a great and conquering thing indeed. One of the enemies that we see here in the Acts of the Apostles of our success that we must be cautious of is the sin of jealousy. It's interesting how all, how these supposedly pious religious people are jealous over another religious group who simply wants to proclaim the word of God. This is what we have to be careful about. To be careful that we don't fight each other in jealousy, but we cooperate with one another and collaborate with one another in the gospel of Jesus Christ. The gospel passage, especially today, that Jesus has not come to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. This is an invitation to get up again and again and trust in God's mercy. Trust in his love that does not give us a license to sin, but gives us a license to repentance and reconciliation and healing. The love of God is the desire that all his children would come home. And he does anything to make that happen, to even give his own son's life for the cause. His agenda, his heart's desire, is to free humanity from the kingdom of darkness and bring them into the kingdom of light. He asks us to be cooperators in this great mission. And I pray with every Eucharist, we could all become more aware that at every communion, we're saying amen to this great cause, to this mission of divine mercy. Amen.